Apple earnings are just moments away. Joining us to discuss, Ed Lee from the New York Times, Russ Gerber from Gerber Kawasaki, a shareholder, Ed Snyder from Charter Equity Research, Courtney Dominguez from Payne Capital Management, and Dan Ives from Wedbush Securities. Great of you all to be here, Dan. What's the key number you're looking for? Look, I mean, it's really all about guidance December. The line in the sand's an 80 million unit number. Um, you know, can they guide to that sort of number in terms of 80 million? And ASPs. ASPs is the key. 800 that line in the sand the street's looking for. The average selling prices, which has been the big driver. Yeah, look, this is, this is all about iPhone into December. We saw last year where ultimately this was disappointing in terms of the cycle. It's all about China. China's the fuel in the engine. So I think, you know, quarter takes a bad seat to guidance. Courtney, do you agree with that on the average selling price? Because you got the new higher price phones. They got about 10 days of sales time in the quarter. Could be a little, little difficult to read. Actually, and actually, to Dan's point here, China is one of the big issues. And not necessarily with the trade wars, but we're looking at the price of the China's currency has devaluated. So iPhones are now more expensive in China. So we got to see how that's going to affect the bottom line when it comes to sales. It has affected them before. Yes. Ross Gerber, what will you be watching for? Uh, China, China, China. You know, this is a big uh, sort of unknown as, as far as what effect it's having. Our checks have been we haven't seen a big effect on iPhone sales, but, you know, with higher prices, we're going to see here. But ultimately, we don't think that will drive the stock. Uh, Ross, what do you make of the fact the stock's been so relatively uh, strong going? I'm sorry, Dan. What do you make of the fact it's been so strong going into the print right here? Are expectations too high or complacent? Look, I mean, you look at a lot of their fang peers, they've sort of dropped the ball in terms of earnings. Here, you have a specific product cycle that, that, that we believe is just unique in terms of technology and the services business. I think more and more investors are starting to give them that multiple. The re-rating on services is key and the valuation you could digest. So I think this is one, more money, especially on large cap, consolidates into Apple here. And just to recap Apple's performance, it did close the day higher. It was a relative outperformer during the month of October when most of technology got shellacked. It's the second best performer in the Dow Jones Industrial Average this year, up more than 25 percent. So there's a lot riding on this quarter and the out and the holiday forecast. Josh Lipton, Apple earnings are out. Tell us about the numbers. Sarah, Apple reporting earnings per share of $2.91. The street was at $2.78. Revenue, $62.9 billion. Analysts had been at $61.6 billion. Gross margins at 38.3%. iPhone shipments at 46.9 million units, Sarah. The street was at 47.5 million, but iPhone average selling prices, you guys were just talking about that, that comes in at $793. The street was at $751. iPad shipments, $9. 7 million max 5.3 million services up 17 percent to 10 billion uh, though apple is saying here if you ex- exclude this one time uh, favorable adjustment from uh, the year ago period they say it was an increase of 27 uh, percent other products remember that includes the watch that was up 31 percent to 4.2 billion dollars and finally for that guidance q1 guidance apple is saying 89 to 93 billion the street was at 92.9 billion gross margins they're calling for 38 between 30 38 and 38.5 percent. I did have the chance to catch up with Apple CEO Tim Cook about the quarter. Let me bring you those comments. First, on the iPhone ASP, the average selling price there of $793. Cook saying, if you look at the top end of our iPhone lineup, we grew double-digit units, and that gets compounded when you look at the ASP as well. And so it was a huge quarter for us on the high end of the line. Of course, the 10s and 10s Max launched there. It became available uh, in late September. On that Q1 guidance, Cook telling investors, There are some realities, he says, uh, they should be aware of. He tells us there will be a tougher compare in Q1. He also said the second thing is that the foreign exchange will hit us to the tune of $2 billion during the quarter in Q1. And the third is with this unprecedented number of new products we've got, it will take us some time on some products to get into supply-demand balance. And finally, on that faster-growing higher-margin services business, Cook telling us we remain on track on our goal to double our services by 2020. Again, that gets them to around $50 billion. We had records almost across the board from the App Store to cloud services to Apple Music to Apple Pay to Apple Care. And we now have over 330 million subscriptions in the ecosystem between our services and the third parties we offer. That's up 50 percent, he says, year over year. Guys, back to you. Josh Lipton, Josh, thank you very much. Okay, but the stock is down nearly 5%. It is the biggest company in the world. It's one of the heaviest weighted in the Dow because of its price. So this does not bode well for the Dow. But, Courtney, I don't think you'd be quite as critical of Apple's quarter. 
No, I wouldn't at all. And I think one thing we're looking at, too, is the average sales price. But they have so many other things that they're working with here. It's not just getting us more iPhone sales, but they want to sell us on products outside of our iPhones. They're trying to get us on Apple Pay, and they're trying to get us our Apple Watches and all of these other devices that they want to sell our existing users. And I think we're going to see that, that we don't want to focus just on the iPhone alone.